Hello, guys. Welcome to Tess Reading Club session. Tess Reading Club is an association of literature enthusiasts from across India. They come together and read different novels, poems, plays. And we have been doing this for well over a year now. There are hundreds of people in our group enthusiastically partaking in this activity. And uh, today we have a special session because our beloved Mary Roy has passed away. We have just one reader today, Sayyidu Lakshmi. She will be reading out articles from newspapers and magazines about Mary Roy. Now that is something we are doing with a difference. Before I talk to you about Mary Roy, let me remind you the importance of newspapers, magazines, and journals. Usually in Test Reading Club, we read literature. But today we want to remind you the importance of newspapers and magazines and other periodicals. They give us, as you know, a lot of information about current affairs. They help us build our general awareness about politics, economy, entertainment, industry, fashion, trade and commerce, business, sports. And they also help us build our language skills, reading and writing skills especially. Newspapers and magazines are about how to present information in a very interesting manner, which is a skill essential for teachers. And obviously, we also learn a lot of good words, etc., from uh, newspaper articles and magazines. Remember, these days, questions are asked in exams about articles. Recently, in case that they had asked about an article written by Shashi Tharoor in a magazine. So that is why we are reading from newspapers today, but it is also about Mary Roy. We know her daughter, Arunthadi Roy, very well. Mary Roy was herself a great educator, women's activist, and in Kerala, in Kotayam, she had started a school called Pallikudam, which upheld socio environmental concerns. Mary Roy is also remembered as a gender activist. She stood for gender equality and she won a significant Supreme Court case where she fought against her own family, against the unequal gender inheritance uh, rights, inheritance rights based on gender in Syrian Christian families. She contested and she won the case against it. This is uh, Mary Roy. So today we are uh, reading from newspaper articles based on Mary Roy because on the 1st of September, 2022, unfortunately, she passed away. We are sharing the screen and I have Seth Lakshmi right here with me. We will be presenting to you the revolutionary educationist, Mary Roy. Good afternoon, everyone. Excerpts from articles about Mary Roy. Arindadi Roy had dedicated her debut novel, The God of Small Things, to her mother, 
for Mary Roy, who for Mary Roy, who grew me up, who taught me to say excuse me before interrupting her in public, who loved me enough to let me go. The woman's rights activist is immortalized in her daughter's acclaimed novel, The God of Small Things as Amu, a willful, rebellious, divorced mother. Life was not easy for Mary Roy. After a tumultuous marriage and divorce, she was left with two young children. She had barely any financial support and had to fight her brother over the family property after her father passed away without a will. However, she is best known for the Mary Roy case, her milestone legal battle that secured equal rights for women in the inheritance of ancestral property of the Syrian Christian families in Kerala. Roy came from the conservative Syrian community in Kerala, where patriarchs and the clergy reigned supreme. The personal law governing inheritance for, of Christians in Kerala was the Travancore Christian Succession Act, which had been promulgated by the Maharaja of Travancore. As per this law, a daughter could only inherit one-fifth of the share of property inherited by the son or rupees 5,000, whichever is less. Worse, if the father had paid for stridhana, as was the usual practice in the community, then the daughter was not even entitled to the property left by the father. Mary Roy was a divorced single mother from an affluent Syrian Christian family. Her father was an entomologist who had trained in London. Mary, who had married a Bengali man against her father's wishes, did not receive any dowry. She entered her marriage at 30 when she discovered her husband, a Bengali Hindu tea estate manager, was an alcoholic. She then moved to a family property in Uti to live with her mother, who also had walked out of her marriage. When Mary's father passed away without a will, problems arose. One of her brothers wanted to sell the property in Uti as he, as he was in need of money. And he quoted the Christian Succession Act of 1916 when Mary protested against the decision to sell the house where she was raising her children. Roy did not file a case the next day. She was asked to vacate her father's cottage in Uti. She was as pragmatic as she was independent. She first started a school, Corpus Christi, which later became Palikoda, made some money and then approached the Supreme Court in 1983. It was not the cottage in Uti that she fought for, but 75 cents of family land in Kote. Her sister Molly did not join her. Roy had sarcastically said that her sister was a good Syrian Christian who lost the idea of hiring a lawyer. But she did have a co appellant Elikuti Chako of Muwatapura. She and her five daughters were thrown out of the family house by her son after the death of her husband. Mary Roy challenged the act in the Madras High Court and the court ruled in, in her favor. Since the property in Uti, Tamil Nadu was under the jurisdiction of Indian Christian Succession Act 1925, which did not discriminate heirs between based on. based on gender, the property was handed over to Mary Roy by the family. On February 24, 1986, 
Mary Roy won the legal fight for equal rights over the property of her father. The judgment said that the Travancore Christian Succession Act of 1916 was no more valid and the Indian Succession Act 1925 will hereafter become legally binding, Justice Katie Thomas noted. Mary Roy's protracted legal battle for equal inheritance law for Christian, Syrian. Syrian Christian women was easily one of the most heatedly and divisively debated one, laying, laying bare the gendered fault lines at the core of our culture, where even women conditioned and groomed as they are within patriarchal cultures, religions and families, failed to understand how a woman could stand up against her own family for justice. The verdict in Mary Roy versus State of Kerala was a landmark victory for the women of this country. Roy, as a lone woman, fought against the repressive Travancore Christian Succession Act, which barred Syrian Christian women from obtaining a decent inheritance from their father's property. Keep in mind, this is 1986, long, long before the mainstream had woken up to the idea of gender parity and women's liberation in India. She didn't file the case because she needed the money. After getting divorced, the ultimate no-no in Kerala society then, she ended up in Kotayam, where she set up a premier educational institution called Corpus Christi High School, now rechristened Palikudam. So, why did she decide to fight a legal case that everyone told her she had no chance of winning? To put it simply, it was a matter of principle. Urban legend has it that once she made a card for herself, which she read, the dreamer educationalist. May her last journey be in accompaniment with fights of dreams that sing of a more gentle, just India where education creates joyful children, girls and boys, and afraid of living their lives to the full and pursuing their dreams of variant hues. She leaves behind as her legacy, not just her daughter, the writer and critic Arundhati Roy, the captivating chronicler of the saga of Aymana, but many bereaved daughters of India who dare to translate their dreams into deeds even while lamenting the passing away of an age of a revolutionary dream called Mary Roy. Thank you. Thank you, Seth Lakshmi. So we just read excerpts from various newspapers and articles to give you uh, an overview of the life of Mary Roy. When we read a newspaper or a magazine article, what we are getting is not only facts, but also perspectives. Reading like this would help us to develop our perspectives and opinions, to look at an issue from different angles. So it is very, very important that you read not only one newspaper or one magazine, but several. Now, Mary Roy was a very, very inspiring woman. From the little that we know of her from these articles, she was much more than that, I'm sure. From the little that we know, there is some valuable takeaway. What is it? One, Mary Roy showed how important it is to live your dreams. Also, she showed how one's actions should change the lives of others in a good way. Our lives are interconnected with the lives of others in so many ways. We should live in such a way, we should work in such a way to improve the society, to improve the lives of others. And very importantly, I have learned from Mary Roy that we should always dare to be different. So I hope you liked this session. It was brief and sweet. I hope you liked this session. 
on the amazing personality Mary Roy who gave us Arundhati Roy as well as Pallikudam and new perspectives on gender and education. Keep reading, keep learning, keep growing everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. We will come back with Tess Reading Club activities every Sunday at 2 p.m. If you want to join us, the Telegram group link is there in the description of the video. You can always join us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful Sunday evening.